Hey everyone, this is Michael again, and welcome to the SmackDown Review. SmackDown tonight was from the Box Center in Tulsa, Oklahoma. And SmackDown tonight, what a waste of two hours this show was. This show was bland and terrible. You know, outside of Roman Reigns appearing on the show tonight. You know what tonight consists of on SmackDown? A whole two hours of number one contender matches. That's all it was. That's all this show was. If you did not watch SmackDown tonight, you missed absolutely nothing. What a waste of two hours this was. This show sucks. There is literally no story coming out of SmackDown. Outside of Roman Reigns. But what do we got on the show tonight? The Street Profits versus A-Town Down. Number one contender match for the Tag Team Championships. Jay Cargill versus Alba Fire. We have Santos Escobar versus Andrade. Number one contenders match for the United States Championship. DIY versus Pretty Deadly. Another number one contenders match for the Tag Team Championship. And that was your main event. That, that was SmackDown tonight. A waste of two hours and just number one contender matches. Except for Jay Cargill versus Alba Fire. That's all it was. But anyway, let's jump right into the review. SmackDown open up tonight with Cody Rhodes, the undisputed WWE champion. He ended up coming out. Of course, the crowd popped for Cody. You know, everybody was doing, whoa! So Cody got into the ring. He got on the mic. And he asked the fans, he did a shtick, you know, what do you want to talk about? Cody ended up saying, all eyes are on what happens next. And he has been thinking about who he wants to defend his undisputed WWE Championship against at Bash in Berlin. So then Cody got interrupted by Sol Sokoa and uh, Tama Tonga and Tonga Loa. We did not see Jacob Fatu you know, on the show tonight because he is selling uh, the injury of what we saw at SummerSlam when he uh, ended up crashing through the table. But from what I heard, Jacob Fatu is not injured, and he's just selling it. So I really thought that, you know, Jacob Fatu was injured from that spot at SummerSlam on Saturday. It looks like Jacob Fatu is fine, but he's off TV, you know, trying to sell, you know, the uh, the injury. So Sol so Sokoa got on the mic. He ended up telling Cody. That he doesn't care what he wants to talk about or what the fans want to hear. So I'll end up saying that he wants to talk about SummerSlam, where had it not been for Roman Reigns, he would have been the champion. Sokoa ended up telling Cody that he will give him a rematch for the title. Cody then ended up telling Sokoa that it's because of Sokoa that Jacob Fatu is injured. He ended up saying that Sokoa is cosplaying as the tribal chief. So Cody ended up calling Sokoa delusional. So the bloodline got on the ring apron. Kevin Owens then jumped from the crowd and he came in with two steel chairs. So the bloodline ended up backing down and Sokoa ended up telling uh, you know, Cody that he will deal with him later if he finds Roman Reigns. So Cody ended up telling Sokoa that he will be waiting for him. So the bloodline ended up heading to the back. Cody ended up telling Kevin Owens that this will be uncomfortable and that Owens will likely say no. So Cody ended up telling Kevin Owens that he would like to face him. Kevin Owens ended up telling Cody that he appreciates it, but he doesn't deserve a title match. He ended up saying that he has done nothing to earn it. To which the fans end up chanting, you deserve it. 
So Cody ended up saying that he had a feeling Owens would say no. But Cody ended up saying to Owens that he didn't forget what he did for him. Cody ended up telling Owens that he can say no all he wants. And that he is going to talk to Nick Aldis. And he will give him all the reasons why he should face him at Bash in Berlin. So Cody up saying, hopefully after his talk with Nick Aldis, he will tell him, see you at Bash in Berlin. So Cody up dropped the mic, and he headed to the back, and pretty much that was basically that. But we all know that this match is going to get booked, which uh, we uh, saw earlier in the night. So it's going to be Kevin Owens versus Cody Rhodes for the Undisputed WWE Championship at Bash in Berlin. And I'm like, this makes no sense. You gotta have Kevin Owens possibly turn heel, you know, at some point before he gets to Bash in Berlin. Or we're gonna have a babyface versus babyface match. You know, in my opinion, it makes no sense. Do we need to see the match? No. So then we had Byron Saxton. Byron Saxton was backstage. With the Street Profits. And B-Fab was with them. B-Fab ended up saying to Byron Saxon. That the Street Profits are motivated. Determined. And on point. Montez Ford. Ended up congratulating. Sarcastically congratulating the Bloodline. On winning the tag team titles. But the real Tribal Chief. Has come back. Dawkins ended up saying that. It's been three years. Since they've had gold. And all that stands in their way is a town down under. So pretty much that was basically what uh, the Street Profits had to say. And then we had the first match. The Street Profits versus a town down under. This was a number one contenders match for the Tag Team Championship. And this was a decent match here. So Dawkins and Austin Theory start off the match. So Grayson Waller end up distracting uh, Dawkins, and Austin Theory end up attacking uh, Dawkins from behind. So we had both uh, Grayson Waller and Austin Theory end up taking it to Dawkins. Waller end up pulling Montez Ford off the apron and send him into the barricade. Dawkins end up punching away at Theory. He up sent Theory into the corner for a twist and avalanche. Dawkins started punching away at Theory, and he up sending Theory into the corner for a twist and avalanche. Dawkins ended up sending uh, Theory into the opposite corner. He up charging, but uh, Dawkins ended up hitting the ring post show the first uh, when uh, Theory moved out of the way. Wall and Theory then approached B Fab at ringside, but Montez Ford ended up wiping both. Uh, Wall and Theory out with a somersault senton, which was cool. So then SmackDown went to commercial. Then when SmackDown came back from the commercial, Austin Theory was in control of the match. He ended up connecting with a rolling thunder drop kick on Dawkins. Grayson Wall then tagged in. Dawkins ended up fighting off both Waller and Theory. Dawkins then ended up punching Waller down, and Dawkins then hit Theory with an explorer suplex. Montez Ford tagged in. Ford ended up pinning Waller with a cross body block. He ended up punching Theory off the apron. Ford then ended up pinning a pair of clotheslines to Waller. And then he had pinned Theory with a flapjack. Ford ended up pinning Waller with a back suplex. And then he ended up kipping up. And Ford ended up pinning a standing moonsault to Grayson Waller. So Ford ended up going for the cover. And Waller ended up kicking out. Montez Ford headed to the top rope, and Grayson Waller moved out of the way, and Ford ended up landing on his feet. Waller then ended up tackling Ford into Theory, to which Theory ended up tagging in. So both Theory and Waller ended up sandwiching Ford with some uh, rolling forearms to Montez Ford. So Theory ended up going for the cover. Ford ended up kicking out. Montez Ford ended up elbowing Theory back, but Grayson Waller ended up pulling uh, Ford out of the ring. Ford ended up super kicking Waller at ringside. And Dawkins pounced Waller into the timekeeper's area. 
Ford got into the ring, and Dawkins tagged in. Ford ended up getting out of, you know, A-Town Down, and the Street Profits end up in a blockbuster doomsday on uh, Grayson Waller. So, we have the Street Profits end up winning the match. So, the Street Profits are now, you know, noble contenders for the Tag Team Championship. Overall, decent match it was. And then we had Cody Rhodes. Cody Rhodes was shown talking with Nick Aldis. Kevin Owens was in there. He kept saying that he doesn't deserve a title opportunity. Nick Aldis ended up saying that he has been considering Roman Reigns for a title match. So Kevin Owens was not happy to hear about that. He kept saying that he doesn't care that he was champion for four years and that he always had help. He kept saying that the rematch clause has not been enforced in years. Well, really, Owens. So Kevin Owens ended up telling Nick Aldis to go to the locker room and he'll find someone more deserving than Reigns. Nick Aldis ended up saying to Owens that he doesn't need to go to the locker room. So Nick Aldis ended up telling Kevin Owens that Cody Rhodes sees it, the crowd sees it, and he sees it. So Nick Aldis then made the match official. Cody Rhodes versus Kevin Owens for the Undisputed WWE Championship at Bash in Berlin. Do we need the match? No. Does it make sense? No. And then, as SmackDown came back from the commercial, we had Tiffy Stratton. Tiffy time. Miss Money in the Bank. So Tiffy Stratton was yelling at a stagehand about the decorations for Nia Jax, because next week we're going to get a championship celebration for Nia Jax. So pretty deadly, pretty awful, end up coming up to Tiffy Stratton. And pretty deadly end up asking Stratton if she'll plan a party for them when they win the tag team championship. And they end up saying that they're thinking of a musical. But Tiffy Stratton end up blowing Pretty Deadly off. You know, when you have Pretty Deadly on the show, you already know that this show is going to suck. So Tiffany Stratton walked down the hallway backstage, and she kept getting stopped by Chelsea Green and Piper Niven. Chelsea Green criticized the wardrobe choice that Tiffany Stratton was wearing, and the decorations for Nia Jax's you know, championship celebration next week. So Strand ended up asking Chelsea Green if she has a ladder to fall off of. Strand ended up saying that Chelsea Green is delusional. And she ended up storming off, and pretty much that was basically that. Moving on. Jay Cargill versus Alba Fire. This was not a number one contender match. This was, you know, a standard, you know, regular one-on-one -on -one match. And didn't even care for this match. This match was boring. The winner of the match, Jay Cargill. Jay Cargill ended up hitting Jaded on Alba Fire. And Jay Cargill won the match. Post-match, Jay Cargill and Bianca Belair stood tall in the ring. Blair Davenport ended up attacking both Cargill and Bianca Belair from behind. So Alba Fire and Isla Dawn end up joining in uh, with Blair Davenport. So we had a, a three on two beatdown. And that brought out Naomi. Naomi ended up running down to make the save. And Alba Fire and Isla Dawn end up cutting uh, Naomi off until Jay Cargill ended up crushing Alba Fire with a big boot. Isla Dawn was then knocked out of the ring. And Pretty much that was basically that. Do you all care what is happening here? I 100% say you guys don't even care. And I don't care either. Now we had Ellie Knight. Ellie Knight, the new United States champion. Yeah! He ended up making his way to the ring. 
big pop from the crowd there in Tulsa. And what was really cool was you saw uh, Lou Ferrigno. Of course, you all know him. He played the Incredible Hulk, you know, back in the uh, late 70s, you know, to early 80s. You know, the Incredible Hulk TV series, which is one of my favorite uh, shows. Lou Ferrigno was just absolutely good portraying the Hulk on TV. You know, he also had the late, great Bill Bixby, you know, in it, you know, playing uh, Dr. David Banner. So, pretty cool to see Lou Ferrigno there. So, we had the crowd and up chanting, you know, Ellie Knight. Ellie Knight got on the mic. He did his whole shtick, you know, let me talk to you. He kept saying SummerSlam has come and gone. But with all the answers, one question still remains. And I end up saying that people have asked if it was extra sweet to beat Logan Paul in his hometown. To which the crowd end up chanting, yeah. And then they chanted, you deserve it tonight. So Ellie and I end up saying that he doesn't give a damn about beating Logan Paul in his hometown. He ends up saying what he cares about is his promise to become champion. He kept saying that at long last, he has arrived, and he made it that way. He kept saying, what does that mean? The United States Championship makes him a marked man. But now you end up saying that he's been a marked man since the day he came to SmackDown with a chip on his shoulder. He kept saying that the game is the same, and he'll keep walking in, hit it, and quit it. So now you end up saying that you can't stop the undeniable. And that led to Santos Escobar end up making his way out. He made his way out alongside Humberto, Angel, and Electra Lopez. So Santos Escobar sarcastically congratulated Ellie Knight. Escobar then got into the ring along with Electra Lopez, Humberto, and Angel Garza. Escobar end up telling the crowd and Ellie Knight that they both suck. Escobar end up saying that it's not every day you get a guy like Ellie Knight finally getting a taste of gold. Escobar end up saying that Knight as a champion isn't something he is buying. He ends up saying that Knight will be in the spotlight for a fleeting moment, but it will all be an opening act to his reign. Escobar then end up saying that this is a fact of life. He is the one who truly deserves to be the United States champion. With everyone saying, S, go, bar, C. So, Knight ended up saying that he couldn't hear what Escobar was saying. Because Tulsa was telling him that he sucks. He ended up saying that Escobar deserves to be beaten by him. He ended up telling Escobar to get a shot at the United States championship, you have to qualify. And that will happen soon. So, now you end up saying that Escobar won't take the United States Championship from him. Because he won't let him. Now you end up saying that this is his game. So then Andrade made his way down to the ring. And SmackDown uh, went to commercial. But, you know, okay segment here with LA Knight. You know, just showcasing that he is the new United States Champion. And he beat Logan Paul at SummerSlam. And as SmackDown came back from the commercial, we had a vignette of Giovanni Vinci. Holy shit, they found Giovanni Vinci. So, Giovanni Vinci, he has a new uh, gimmick change. You know, he's speaking in Italian. It almost reminds me of the gimmick that he had when he was down in NXT. So, he is bringing his relentlessness style to SmackDown. So pretty much that was that. So we got a vignette of Giovanni Vinci. And then we went to the match. Santos Escobar versus Andrade. Number one contenders match for the United States Championship. You know, the winner will get to face Ellie Knight. And this, in my opinion, was the best match of the night. This was a good TV match here. So Escobar ended up whipping Andrade into the ropes. 
Andrade end up shoulder tackling Escobar down. Andrade end up running over Escobar with a second shoulder tackle. Escobar then rolled out of the ring to recover. Andrade then wiped Escobar out with a plancha. And Andrade end up putting Escobar back to the ring. So Angel and Humberto were lurking nearby uh, Andrade. And they started attacking Andrade. Escobar ended up attacking Andrade. He ended up going for the cover. And Andrade kicked out. So Baron Corbin and Apollo Crews end up run down. Both Corbin and Apollo Crews end up attacking Humberto and Angel. So Corbin, Crews, Berto, and Angel end up rolling into the crowd. And that only left Electra Lopez at ringside. She was the only one there of Legado del Fantasma. So Andrade ended up kicking Escobar, and he headed to the top rope. Escobar ended up knocking Andrade to the floor. Escobar went to the outside, and he drove Andrade into the ring post. And then he put Andrade back to the ring. Escobar ended up going for the cover, to which Andrade ended up kicking out. Escobar then ended up sending Andrade into the ropes for a tilt the world backbreaker. Escobar ended up going for the cover, to which Andrade kicked out. Escobar then applied an armbar, but Andrade ended up fighting up. Escobar took Andrade down, but Andrade came back and ended up chopping Escobar. Andrade booted Escobar in the face, and he added to the top rope. But once again, Escobar ended up cutting Andrade off. Andrade t tried to fight Escobar off, but Escobar was attempting a superplex. Andrade ended up fighting that superplex, and he ended up hitting a sunset flip powerbomb to Escobar, which was cool. So then SmackDown went to commercial. So as SmackDown came back from the commercial, we had Escobar in control of the match. He ended up uh, locking in a camel clutch on Andrade. Escobar then elbowed away at Andrade, but Andrade hit the ropes and ended up hitting a running forearm. Andrade ended up hitting another running forearm to Escobar. He ended up going for the run and double knees in the corner, but Escobar ended up getting out of the ring. Andrade went to the top rope, and he had pinned a moonsault block to the floor on Escobar. So Andrade got Escobar back to the ring. He went back to the top rope to deliver a crossbody block, and he actually did hit that on Escobar, and we had Escobar end up kicking out. Later on, you had Carmelo Hayes end up distracting Andrade. Escobar ended up trying to take advantage of the distraction by Carmelo Hayes, but Andrade ended up crushing Escobar with a back elbow, and Andrade went for the cover, and Escobar kicked out. Electra Lopez was on the ring apron to distract the ref. Andrade ended up ignoring Electra Lopez. He ended up going for the run double knees in the corner, but Carmelo Hayes pulled Escobar out of the way. Escobar then rolled Andrade up, and there you go. Santos Escobar ended up winning the match. And he is the new number contender to face LA Knight for the United States Championship. There you go. Well, overall, this was the best match of the night, in my opinion. Very good match it was. And then we had DIY. Johnny Organo and Tommaso Ciampa. They were walking backstage. Tommaso Ciampa ended up saying that the bloodline stole the tag team titles from them last week. Johnny Organo ended up saying that the bloodline beat him in front of his family and young son. He ended up saying that they'll do what it takes to get the titles back. And he ended up saying that pretty deadly is where it all starts again. So then Johnny Organo and Tommaso Ciampa end up making their way out. And then it went to WWE honoring uh, Kevin Sullivan, uh, who passed away today. So thoughts and prayers go out to uh, you know his family, his friends. But you know it was great that uh, they honored you know Kevin Sullivan. So then, as SmackDown came back from the commercial. We saw Austin Theory and Grayson Waller. They end up telling Nick Aldis that apparently people just have to ask for a match. And they get it. So Nick Aldis ended up telling Theory 
you know, that's a great idea because Grayson wanted Kevin Owens. So Nick Aldis made the match official, and the match will happen next week on SmackDown. So we'll end up asking Theory, what is he doing? Theory ended up telling him he has his back. And pretty much that was that. So again, Grayson Waller versus Kevin Owens next week on SmackDown. Main event. DIY versus Pretty Deadly. This was a number one contenders match for the Tag Team Championship. And this was just a very meh match here. So the match ended up getting in the way. Both DIY and Pretty Deadly were in the ring. DIY, Gargano Champ ended up throwing Pretty Deadly to the outside. DIY ended up going for suicide dives, but Pretty Deadly uh, delivered some double uppercuts to uh, DIY. So DIY ended up hitting uh, Pretty Deadly with double drop kicks from behind, followed up by splashes over the top rope, and then SmackDown went to commercial. Then when SmackDown came back from the commercial, Champa was tagged in. He had planned a double clothesline onto Pretty Deadly. Gargano was then tagged in. And Champ and Gargano end up double teaming on Elton Prince. Gargano ended up going for the cover, but Elton Prince ended up kicking out. Gargano was on the ring apron. He ended up diving through the middle rope into the ring, but Elton Prince delivered a kick to Gargano. So Prince ended up going for a splash onto Gargano, but Gargano moved out of the way and tagged in Champa. Kit Wilson was then tagged in, and all four guys were in the ring. Gargano delivered a super kick onto Elton Prince, and Kit Wilson ended up knocking uh, Gargano to the outside. Champa threw Wilson to the outside. Elton Prince was then tagged in. Gargano delivered a spear onto Prince. So DIY ended up hitting the Shatter Machine on Elton Prince, and then they delivered the Meet Me in the Middle. Gargano ended up going for the cover, and there you go. DIY ended up winning the match. And so they're the number one contenders for the Tag Team Championship. But overall, very meh match it was. And as SmackDown came back from the commercial, we saw the Bloodline. The Bloodline were in the ring. This was the final uh, segment of uh, SmackDown tonight. So Sokoa got on the mic, and he had to tell the fans to acknowledge him. Fans were chanting, we want Roman. Sokoa then ended up telling Roman that, in case he hasn't noticed, he is the tribal chief now. And if Roman calls himself the tribal chief, and he wants the Ulafala back, he can come and get it from him. So Roman's music ended up hitting, and out came Roman Reigns. So Sokoa ended up sending Tamatanga toward Roman, but Roman ended up hitting Tamatanga with a clothesline. Roman then grabbed Tangaloa and threw him into the ring steps on the outside. Roman then grabbed the steps and he hit both uh, Loa and Tamatanga with the steps. Roman then looked at Sol Sokoa, who was in the ring, and the fans started chanting OTC. Because, you know, Roman has, you know, the OTC shirt. So Reigns got into the ring. He had pinned Sokoa with some right hands. But so Sokoa delivered a big boot to Roman. Sokoa then ran towards Roman. But Roman delivered a Superman punch to Sokoa. So Roman was going for the spear. And uh, Tangaloa ended up dragging Sokoa to the outside. Roman looked at the Ulafala that was on the canvas, and he grabbed it. But Tamatanga hit Roman from behind. Tangaloa got into the ring, and he ended up kicking Roman. Tangaloa ended up grabbing the Ulafala, and he gave it to Sol Sokoa, who was on the outside of the ring. Roman delivered a Superman punch to both Tangaloa and Tamatanga. Roman then ended up delivering a spear onto, uh, onto Tonga Loa. Fans were chanting OTC. Roman then went to the outside, and he speared Tama Tonga through the barricade, uh, which was great. 
Roman then grabbed a steel chair. He then ended up hitting Tonga Loa with the steel chair across his back. Sokoa then wore the Ulafala, and he had to tell Roman that he is the tribal chief now. Roman then repeatedly hit Tonga Loa with a steel chair, and that was how SmackDown went off the air. Overall, I thought this was a good segment here. Uh, they could have gave Roman Reigns the mic, have him say like a few words to uh, Sol Sokoa. But obviously, you know, it wasn't the case from what we saw here in the segment. But overall, what a bland show this was. There's no story coming out of SmackDown, you know, aside from uh, Roman Reigns and the Bloodline. What a waste of two hours this was. Just no more contender matches and Jay Cargo versus Salva Fire. That was all this was. You know, this is your build to bash in Berlin. But anyways, that's it for my review of SmackDown. Thank you all for watching. Hope you all enjoyed this review. Definitely give the video a thumbs up. Comment, subscribe. And until next video. I'll see you all later.